Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell. Thanks so much for joining us. Today, we've got uh, Scott Holborn joining us to talk about some MMA as usual. And uh, Scott is on the line right away. Hey, Scott, how are you? Welcome. Good, how are you? Doing, doing really good. Yeah, happy Monday. Happy Monday, GT. I'm probably going to put my headphones on, otherwise, the, my kids hear me uh, talk and they'll come running in and try to join into the conversation okay sounds great yeah no problem so we had a huge ufc this past weekend a um, a really oh, yeah. really great card uh davison figueredo and joseph benavides had the flyweight uh, title fight uh, they had a rematch they were um competing last year and there was a bit of a controversial finish as they uh collided heads uh benavides took some damage in that and as he was um, trying to regain his composure, Figueredo knocked him out. And uh, Figueredo had missed weight for the fight, so he wasn't able to take the belt. So they decided to have a rematch, and it was this Saturday. And everybody expected Benavides to be able to come back and uh, take the belt this time. Uh, he had dominated quite a bit of that fight in the first match, but uh, Figueredo uh, turned the tables and, and wouldn't let him. It was, uh, it was a pretty dominating performance by him. Wow, what do you think? Uh, no, no controversy now. Uh, yeah, um, Figueredo came out uh, guns blazing, and he just he just was too much for Benavidez to handle. Uh, he's controlled every minute of that fight uh, from the starting buzzer until the very end. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to feel bad for Benavidez. This is you know probably his last title shot i think he's uh, pushing 35 now but um yeah figueredo i mean he came out and and made a statement and uh wanted to, to hush all the naysayers or anyone that uh that didn't believe that he could do it or was critis- critical of his uh weight issues um he came in on point with weight and uh what a what a performance that has to be one of the one of the better performances this year for sure yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just uh, I couldn't believe the power he displayed. I couldn't believe the submission skills that he had. Uh, he he had him in so many uh, tough, you know, uh, tough positions. He was, uh, you know, almost choking him about, you know, six, seven different times. Uh, had him had him on the ground many, many times. Uh, it seemed like that temple shot that put him down the first time just seemed to keep the legs out of Benavidez. He just wasn't able to withstand anything after that uh, other than, you know, fighting off the chokes. Uh, that, that temple shot seemed to, you know, be the telling blow in my opinion. Absolutely. But give Benavides credit. Man. He is tough. And, and anyone is going to say anything different, uh, I mean, they need to watch that fight again because he is tough. And, and, and he came – I mean, he came – got out of that uh, rear naked choke one or two times prior to the to, – and, and he didn't tap. I mean, he, he went right out. So yeah. uh, he's a tough guy and, and a fierce competitor. And, uh, you know, well liked by everybody, and uh, it's it's hard. It's again, it's hard to see something like that when when you know we've been watching Benavidez for for how long? I mean, he's been a staple of the uh, mixed martial arts community for so long, and uh, yeah, it was tough to watch. It's tough to watch a guy take a beating like that. But um, you know, different than what Jose Aldo did because this uh, Benavidez was was doing everything he needed to do. He was fighting through it, and you know, never did he ever quit at all i mean he it took him being put put to sleep before before the fight actually stopped but yeah it uh figure i know i mean just he's he's made a statement now and 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 look out i mean i don't know i don't know who who's who's next to face him but uh it's gonna be he'll be a tough guy to beat when when he's on point when he's making weight he's gonna be a champion for a long time i would think yeah yeah i i agree yeah he's Super dominant. Um, yeah, you, you, you do have to feel for Benavides. Uh, I've been in the sport a really long time, one of the better guys. Um, his his wife, uh, Megan O'Levy, is a fixture on so many of the casts, and she does such a fantastic job. Um, Joseph, that was his fifth uh, title shot, and uh, like you say... Was it that many? Fifth? Yeah, I thought it was... I was going to say it's his fourth, but oh, man. It, yeah, five times at it, and he couldn't beat Mighty Mouse back in the day, and, and uh, now, you know, he's had this loss, so... Uh, you know, fantastic career. You got, you know, you got to give him a lot of credit. But uh, you know, tough, tough way to end it. Uh, he finally had that uh, ha- uh, maybe one hand on the strap, and then just wasn't able to pull it off. So yeah, I feel, 
I feel for the guy, but uh, you know, uh, Davis and Figueroa have just proved that he is he is the guy to, to beat. And uh, they're talking about Moreno getting this title shot now. We'll see uh, if they can pull that together. Um, there's a lot of great fly- flyweights. We've seen a lot of really good competitors coming up to the forefront recently. So there's going to be some good fights out of that division. Uh, let's let's step into the co-main, the middleweight t- clash between Jack Hermanson and Kelvin Gastelum. Um, Hermanson, wow, just so quick uh, submission, a minute and 18 into it. Uh, I didn't think Gastelum uh, properly defended off that heel hook. Um, it was kind of weak uh, the way he was trying to defend it off, but uh, he had to tap. It was just too tight for him. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think you're right. I think he he didn't realize how much trouble he was in until it was too late. The problem with the heel hook is that you don't really start to feel it until, until your knee's just about to, to go. So, um, yeah, he should have, uh, you know, kicked, kicked Hermanson in the butt and tried to pull that leg out. But uh, I, you're right. He just looked like he was just – thought he would just step out of it. And the guy like Hermanson, I mean, he's, he's like a boa constrictor. When he gets a hold of something, he's not going to let go. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed with the, the fight in a respect that I was really hoping to see Gastelum you know, the way he'd been talking uh, leading up to the fight, how he's found a new, a new outlook. And I mean, he made weight and he did, he looked great going in. His attitude was good. He looked physically ready to go. And it, it's, it's disappointing, but uh, y- you know, you, you, when you go over the ground with the, the grappler like Hermanson, you, you can't take it for granted. You've got to, you can't let your guard down even for a second. No, you're right. Uh, yeah. The Joker just, uh, you know, pulled that out there. <laughs> he was a, uh, yeah, it was just incredibly dominant performance. Um, Gaslam never really had any chance to, you know, do anything in that fight. Uh, Gaslam was coming off, uh, you know, a little bit of trouble in his life. He said he had uh, faced some se- severe depression and, uh, you know, said some he had some demons. He had been caught with uh, marijuana a couple times. And, uh, yeah, he had reached a bit of a crossroads. And uh, I think a lot of people were really hoping that he would put on a good performance and, and be able to, you know, prove to himself and the world that, you know, he was able to overcome a lot of the, you know, mental struggles that he had. And it's too bad. Uh, you know, I think um, he'll learn how to defend that from now on and uh, maybe have a, bit, a lot better chance at a longer fight. But, um, yeah, Hermanson uh, definitely moves himself right up the ranks with that, that performance. Yeah, I mean, Herman, Hermanson, uh, he's probably wanted to make a statement after that TK loss to Jared Cannonier, his last, his last fight out. You know, that was, his, I think, his first uh, headlining match against Cannonier. And, uh, to lose in that fashion, you know, he's uh, not one to, to, to lose much in terms of getting knocked out. You know, he's uh, Diego Santos, you know, was his other loss prior to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he really wanted to make a statement and didn't uh, move up because, you know, I mean, some, you know, right now is a time where certain fighters are not going to want to fight or not going to be able to fight or not be able to train. So these guys want to create momentum and, and, and ride it out. Yeah, you're right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now we have another fight on the card uh, in the lightweight division. Mark Diakis. Um, yeah, very, very talented guy, but he, he ran into this buzzsaw, Rafael Fiziev. Um, wow. Uh, Fiziev's performance uh, really, really super impressed me. Uh, what, what, what were your thoughts about that one? Man, that guy's a, a, <laughs> it's a good striker. Holy smokes. I mean, uh, I mean, two, I mean, that's a fight of two phenomenal strikers. And uh, Fiziev, was that his USC debut? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah so, game. I mean, he's a guy who, uh, I mean, everybody, as you can see, when the when the Twitter accounts were going up, they were speechless with the fireworks that this guy was, was throwing. And uh, great, great fight, fight of the night, uh, deservedly so. Um, but, yeah, Fiziev, I mean, uh, there's there's a there's – a, uh, a new problem in the 155 uh, division now. And uh, that guy, I mean, again, I hadn't seen a fight prior to that, but uh, holy smokes, his, his, his body kicks were just ferocious and his hands were fast and his movement was great. And I mean, when you take a, a guy like Mark Dykes and you, and you outstrike him and, and outmove him, I mean, that, that's, that's huge. It's, yeah. Showing a ton. Yeah. Cause yeah, he, he he's usually the the uh, aggressor and the the guy that you know has a lot more strikes and um they you know like you said the tweets were coming out and also uh, the commentate commentators were just like oh my god can you hear the kicks can you hear the absorption into the the body kicks and the, he was kicking the legs head kicks 
even his punches sounded really, really brutal. Like, wow, the power that this guy displayed. Uh, yeah, it's so great. Um, so many of these guys are coming in for the UFC de debut and just absolutely just shocking the world. It's It's been amazing this past. Uh, it's been year. awesome. Yeah, it's just incredible, hasn't it been? Yeah, it's just, it, wow. Yeah, it, it has been amazing. I mean, when we talk about uh, the next card coming up, uh, We'll talk about one guy who fought a couple cards ago, who's now who just decided to stay in Abu Dhabi. But, but again, we'll we'll keep on busy up here. But uh, who, man? I mean, you know, I don't know what his ground game's going to be like, but if it's half as good as his stand up, uh, you know, <laughs> they've got a big pro they got a big problem for anyone who was going to face face him. I mean, obviously, you know, Khabib Nurmagomedov is going to control that division for a long time, but um, you know, he's uh, he's He's a guy who's a police officer, you know. He's uh, got a kickboxing record, I think, of 47 fights with uh, 30, 39 wins, 29 by knockout. So he's got good hands. Um, we'll we'll see how we'll we'll see how he continues on with uh, when he faces a grappler at some point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, they've they've been giving these guys uh, these opportunities, and then they've been rolling them right back out really, really soon. So we might get an opportunity to see him see him fast uh, maybe they will put him in against somebody that's good on the ground and see if he's well-rounded enough to you know keep moving up the ranks and um yeah we'll, we'll see but a really impressive debut I, I was really blown away and I, I look forward to seeing more of him uh so let's switch to the women's flyweight fight um there was a really nasty knee bar submission here uh, <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> I felt uh really sorry for Carolina she um uh, she was on the ground and trying to defend a bunch of different things. And then all of a sudden her knee was bending the wrong way. And it was a little ugly. She, she looked in a lot of pain. Yeah. I mean, give the credit to Lipsky though. I mean, they got tangled up in a, in a weird, weird position. I mean, there might've even uh, been a calf slicer uh, for Carolina there. So, I mean, Lipsky just, she got down and she knew exactly what she wanted to do and give her all the credit in the world. I mean, I think she got bonus, uh, performance of the night for that because man when she when she pulled that knee bar she pulled it hard and fast and uh Car i mean carolina was screaming in pain there for a few minutes even after the fight was called so uh yeah you got to give uh lipsky credit and you know what i mean look she's she's only uh, 26 years old so she's got a big career ahead of her um the violence queen as they call her yeah. uh but uh really 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 impressive Two fights, uh, winning streak for her now, and at 26 years old, I mean, she looked poised and calm, and to pull out, pull that off is really, really impressive. Yeah, totally. You're right. Yeah, Carolina had been coming in on a six-fight winning streak. She was a, a two-time Muay Thai champion, a really, really great fighter in in her own right. Uh, she was only six and two, but um, you know, six-fight winning streak coming in. Um, that was the second fastest finish in U.S. women's flyweight history. So you know, really quick. Uh, just a lot of scrambling, a lot of movement, and then all of a sudden, boom, she had that knee bar in. Um, yeah, Lipsky, the queen of violence, a great, great name. Uh, I see her husband's uh, her coach, and uh, so they're able to be in the bubble together. Um, that must be great for a fighter. Um, when you have your partner there, you can probably train from morning to night and not have to worry about burning out your coach or your coach having to go uh, you know, talk, deal with another fighter. You can just be with them the whole time. And, um, yeah, it was really impressive uh from her i, I yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to more more action from from that that camp totally but this is coming from a guy who's uh not down in quarantine with his uh his significant other right now clearly you know <laughs> I <see. Yeah>. no <laughs> you know right, yeah, right. But no, I, I, things are good here but i mean <laughs> yeah totally i i see what you're saying but um yeah uh totally impressive i'm looking forward to seeing more from her for sure Hopefully yeah. they can get her. Uh, hopefully they can get her on a card again soon because she didn't take any damage there. I don't even think she took a shot. So hopefully they can get her on uh, again really quick. So I'd like to see that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So there was a um, another flyweight fight on the card uh, with Benavides and Figueredo. Uh, you know, solidifying that champion finally in the flyweight division. Um, there's two really good contenders here that uh, fought in this this matchup. Uh, it was. Alexander Pantoja against Askar Askarov. And, um, yeah, wow, um, you know, really, really great. Uh, a lot of amazing uh, submissions tried by Pantoja. Uh, Askarov was um, looking great on his feet. 
Um, I, I, I was really impressed with um, a lot of the fight. Askarov, um, the bullet is his nickname, and he's deaf, which was um, quite the shock to hear. Uh, it's got to be hard to not being able to hear your corner while you're in the cage, uh, giving you any advice and stuff like that. But he ends up uh, winning the unanimous decision. But, man, it was a razor, razor-thin uh, decision there. I thought uh, both of them really could have kind of taken it, and it was, it was a great, good battle. Yeah, I had Askarov winning the fight because he's, he's able to control guys so well with his uh... – you know, there's those guys from Dagestan. I mean, they just, they have such great wrestling, such great control. When he does get his hands on you, he's going to control you. He's going to have you on the ground. They're going to ground and pound you out. So, you know, um, it, yeah, it was a great fight. Uh, and uh, Pantoja, you know, uh, I think he took it uh, a, little bit, a, lot, a little bit last minute, that one. I mean, he's Brazilian, but he's got good striking. And, uh, you know, I think their the decision went the right way with Askarov, though. But uh, a great, a really great fight. And uh, Askarov's been a guy I've been watching for a while. Like I said, these guys they get those Dagestani handcuffs on you, and uh, they're they're tough guys to beat. So uh, I would keep an eye on him for sure. I mean, he apparently is a guy who has amazing work ethic. And uh, back where back home when where he, when he's training in Dagestan, they're saying that there's no one who who trains more than this guy. So, you know, I think he's a guy that uh, as he gets a higher caliber fights, he can go with a full uh, 25 minutes and, and be able to wear guys out, which is something that, you know, guys like Khabib and other great uh, Sambo and wrestlers have been able to do. So, you know, he's got that, that great, great background. If he can put his striking together a bit more, he's going to be a, a force to reckon with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's just so many amazing fighters coming out of that camp. And, uh, wow, I, I don't think, um, you know, four or five years ago, we really had any idea how amazing of a talent level would be coming from Dagestan. And uh, we did forget to mention about Khabib's uh, father passing away due, due to the COVID, um, COVID virus. And, um, yeah, I know you, you wanted to, to say something about that. Um, yeah, it was a tra- tragic news. Uh, we knew he was sick for a while, and um, we were hoping he was going to pull through, and he didn't. Uh, wasn't a very old guy, uh, really, really physically fit, obviously one of the head trainers of the camp, and, you know, he, he didn't make it. Wow, it was a shock. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a huge blow to, to Khabib and, and the rest of the guys that train with him. I mean, he's been a fixture of the with those guys for a long time, and Dana White has said that, you know, he was, uh, you know, class, a class act. And I'm sure all the guys over at AKA in San Jose there um, feel the same way. But, yeah, it's it's scary. Like, we've been talking about COVID so much. And, you know, it's uh, it's, it's a scary thing when, uh, when it starts to affect, you know, people in that way. You know, we see, we've seen guys have positive tests. But then when someone loses their battle with it, it's, it's pretty scary. And like you said, he was young, uh, 57 years old, I think. So. You know, hopefully uh, it doesn't affect Khabib too too much, and uh, hopefully we'll see him back this year. But I, I I'd be surprised if we see him back in 2020. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of really moving tributes from a lot of guys. Uh, Daniel Cormier comes to mind. Um, you know, he had talked about how much uh, you know how great of a guy he was, how fun he was around, uh, how you know, but how determined he was to raise that camp to the level of the one of the top camps in the world and have champions and, and Khabib, you know, is just, you know, on another level from most guys and just has, you know, impressed, you know, beyond belief. And then, you know, you see the guys like Askarov coming in and, you know, continuing to show that, you know, these guys uh, are being trained really, really well. And, uh, you know, look out from guys in that camp and, and we, you know, a lot of times we heard COVID was just really, you know, um, affecting the old and affecting the people that were out of shape and and uh you know it was only killing people that uh, were already compromised health but uh it wasn't the case here and so i think it it, it kind of rocked the mma world and shocked them uh, that you know a guy like that could could pass away um you know in in the picture of health really for as far as we heard so yeah it was devastating news and you know i feel feel really sorry for khabib but um yeah i'm, I'm hoping that he can, uh, you know, get into the cage and train and do the, you know, the thing that he's best at and, you know, continue holding that belt and doing really well. So, yeah. yeah so, anyway, those, yeah, those fight, ahead. anyone, any of those guys from that Fighting Eagles uh, over in Dagestan there, they're, uh, they're definitely forces to be reckoned with. And uh, hopefully these guys use this as motivation just to, to keep moving forward and, 
you know, I get, again, every time I see one of those guys on the card, I get excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so let's uh, turn to the prelims. And uh, the, the um, featured prelim was a light heavyweight battle. And uh, Roman Delice, the undefeated fighter there. Um, wow, holy cow. Uh, we, we speak about another guy that just had an amazing debut. Uh, oh, man, that, uh, that knockout was just totally <laughs> blew, blew me away. Super impressive. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, these guys, I'm trying to bring you up. Sorry, so I have my notes here. Yeah, I mean, uh, TKO, knee, um, what are you saying? First round. Again, uh, guys who uh, I know I hadn't seen Delize fight. It was I don't know if that was his uh, again his, de- his debut. His debut. Yeah, it was yeah. But uh, these are guys, you know, making the best of it, taking the taking the ball and running with it. It's it's awesome to see. Yeah, I think I think he was throwing a head kick, and uh, uh, he, he off, uh ended up ducking in, and it, he ended up taking the knee right in the face, and yeah, that was it. Just like wow, just so po- much power. I. Uh, the power that uh, Delice showed, uh, he, he's just a physical specimen. I was really impressed with his body, how, you know, how powerful and strong he looked. He looked like a really big, light heavyweight. Yeah, and again, uh, I think you're exactly right now that you mentioned it. it was going for the head kick, but again, ducked down, hit the, took the knee right to the face, and no one's getting up from that. But yeah, he was, he's a big, big guy, and, uh, you know, he's... Uh, what can you say? I mean, he's going to be someone who have to. I want to watch again. Yeah, yeah, you're it's so, right. It's yeah. so hard. It's so hard to tell if this is something that you know is 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 a one off or when you when I haven't seen the guys fight much. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah, uh, I, you know, th- this is a weird time, and we're seeing so many UFC debuts. Uh, a lot of people were having a hard time traveling. Um, the reason why they had this all these cards on Fight Island was to try to get the. Um, you know, European community and other areas, uh, Middle East and Russia and different places uh, had an opportunity to travel into, but some guys weren't getting clearance to, to travel. Some guys weren't, uh, weren't willing to. Uh, so they've had to have a lot of late, you know, late announcements, guys coming in on the USC debuts. Uh, it's been unprecedented types of, of cards that we haven't seen. We haven't seen so many debuts, but there's guys on regional circuits around the world that are, you know, poised to show the world what, you know, what they're made of. And most of them want to really put on a, a really impressive display right away. So they want to go for the knockout. They don't want to, you know, fight on the ground and grind out a win. So we are seeing a lot of, a lot more knockouts and a lot more spectacular things that we normally do on, on a lot of the cards. Well, one thing that impressed me about Delice was is he was very, for a guy making his UFC debut, he was really calm. And he looks like a mean guy, too. I mean, even when he checked, uh, I don't know if you remember this, when he checked uh, uh, one of the uh, front kicks, he started laughing at the guy because you could see in his face that his check hurt, hurt the guy's shin. So, I mean, he looks, he looks like a, a guy who's, you know, I don't know. I mean, to, to have that kind of uh, sort of calm and cool uh, way about him. And, and Dana White was there in the, in the crowd. He's not going to be there next week because he's going, going bad to get uh, – the rest of the fights sorted out but um yeah i mean delete saying this looks like, looks like a mean bad dude <laughs> yeah you're right yeah he he definitely uh didn't show any mercy on the guy and like yeah he he was pretty determined to knock him out and take him out of this uh fight uh didn't want to you know disappoint in his debut and uh he sure didn't so yeah, let's see. Uh, you know, another another impressive debut. It was pretty pretty There's, great. There were a few guys from that from Georgia on that on the cards in the last few few weeks, and they've yeah. all been really really impressive. So, you know, I, I'm not sure what kind of uh, you know MMA camps they have over there in Georgia in the country of Georgia, but uh, we're gonna find out pretty darn soon. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so. Um, there was a catchweight fight. There have been some catchweight fights because guys are getting such late notice, not being able to uh, get down to the normal weight. So they uh, fought at 150 pounds here. Um, Grant Dawson and Nad Niramani. Uh, Dawson took the decision. He's 16 and one, and uh, on a seven-fight win streak. Um, yeah, he he looked pretty impressive. There was a, a lot of um, a lot of flying knees. Uh, he looked very athletic. Uh, yeah, it was. A, I think it was. 
it was a right call decision there. But uh, anything stand out for you there? Yeah, I mean, both again, both guys uh, looked really, really good. Um, you know, I think I think uh, Dawson usually fights at one fifty five, so getting down to uh, one forty five, would it, which is uh, Naramani's uh, division, was going to be a bit tough for him. But uh, yeah, I think he looked good. And uh, again, I'm excited to see these guys again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, some of the other fights on the card. Uh, nice uh, submission by Joel Alvarez, two minutes and 25 seconds into the first round. Um, guillotine choke. Um, yeah, anything um, in particular yeah. you want to talk about that one? That was surprising. I mean, Joe Duffy, you know, he's got uh, good striking, good uh, jiu-jitsu, good wrestling. Um, it was a bit, it was a bit, uh, a bit surprising that uh, Alvarez could get that uh, so quick on Duffy there. But uh, yeah, I mean, once you once you sink in a choke like that, it's it's hard. You know, you're not getting out. No. And uh, the bantamweight fight between Brett Johns and Montel Jackson. Uh, Jackson had the early advantage and knocked John Johns down and uh, looked pretty good in that first round. But then Johns definitely took over the the next two rounds and and uh, grinded out a decision. I, I was pretty impressed by uh, John's coming back. I thought that he you know, definitely looked a bit rocked in that first round, and um, Jackson was looking great, but uh, John's just uh, was determined and, and got the last two rounds. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. agree. Yeah. And uh, Malcolm Gordon, a Canadian guy, making his debut, 32 years old, finally getting an opportunity in the UFC, and uh, unfortunately he ended up getting caught in a submission. Uh, do you um, you got anything to, to add to to that one? Yeah, I mean, uh, tough tough night for the Canadian, but uh, yeah, getting caught in a triangle choke there in the uh, end of the end of the first, just nothing he could do. I mean, yeah, too bad. Yeah, and the other uh, the other fights were decisions. Uh, Sergey Spivak uh, won a decision the opening opening fight, and Armand Sukaran uh, got a decision as well. There, um, anything special we should Talk about there, or just move move on. Yeah, no, those those were were. Uh, yeah, just yeah, we'll move on with some of those ones there. You know, there's been so many fights in the last uh, in the last three days. I'm getting them mixed up in my head. So yeah, no, it was, they were just uh, normal decisions. Uh, you know, one guy, you know, twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty eight. So yeah, no problem. Uh, early early fights, and uh, it was you know better as the card wore on for sure. Really. Really great card. I, I was uh, happy that they put on three fights in seven days like that. And uh, it, was, it was really, um, yeah, fun. Uh, I'm glad um, Figueredo had that opportunity and finally solidified that belt. No more controversy, like you say. And, and uh, now we can move on and see uh, who he's going to face next and who is going to be the contenders for that belt. So, um, yeah, so let's, why don't we move on to this Saturday's coming up card and, uh, the main event uh, excites me. Um, Robert Whitaker has been a, an amazing warrior, uh, representing both New Zealand and Australia all the time. He's got heritage from both, and and uh, yeah, he's been you know he was the, the middleweight champion, and um, yeah, he's he's you know been in a couple wars with Yoel Romero and Adesanya, and you know really really fantastic fighter. And, and Darren Till, uh, yeah, he's. You know, looked great in most of his fights. Obviously, knocked out by Jorge Masvidal um, recently, but um, yeah, it should be a really incredible war. Uh, you're looking forward to this one as much as I am. Oh, totally. And I think this is Darren Till's proper division that he needs to be in. Uh, I think getting down to that welterweight was probably too big a cut for him. So fighting at 185. I mean, he looked good against Gastelum. He won a split decision in his last fight. So. I'm really looking forward to seeing him fighting what you know a, a top guy like like Whitaker. Seeing him come in uh, with a good, long camp, uh, 185. I want to see what he's made of. I mean, I think you know he never he didn't make any excuses with his last with with his losses to Masvidal or to Woodley. But I think that weight cut. I mean, I remember even when he fought Gaslam, he looked. I mean, he looked way bigger than Gaslam. Right. Yeah. So you know, I'm going to be. I, I'm curious to see how he's going to look against Whitaker. Um, but yeah, I think this is the division he needs. He needs to be in, and he needs to come out and if not win this fight, set it, make a statement saying that this is where he belongs. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I think I am excited about this one for sure because uh, you know these are two guys who aren't afraid to to get dirty. It's not going to. 
not going to be something where everyone's going to try to lay on each other for for uh, for five rounds. Someone is someone's going for it here, and and and, and Till is young still, and he's he's hungry, and I'm I'm totally excited to see. And, and Whitaker Whitaker needs needs to to prove he's still relevant, and and uh, you know he's got this hungry kid coming up after him, so it, it should be fun to see for sure. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Yeah. Whitaker's 21 and five. Um, he's fought, you know, amazing, amazing talent. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he's black belt in karate, black belt in hapkido, brown belt in jujitsu. He's been fighting in the UFC since 2012. He's got some really big wins in his career. Uh, Darren Till, 18, two and one. Uh, like you say, he had that fight against Gaslam. It was a split decision, but um, yeah, I thought, thought he won that fight. Um, I did too. Yeah. The, uh, you know, that, that knockout to Masvidal uh, was really shocking to him and to, I think, the world. Uh, just it's such a massive, massive knockout. Uh, he had lost to Woodley with Darsh choke, so he, um, you know, can be beat either way. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. He's Like you say, he's young, he's hungry, and, um, you know, I know that he uh, wants to win. He's, um, you know, he's had some big wins in his, in his career. He beat Wonder Boy and Cowboy Cerrone and, uh, you know, big knockouts. But... Um, yeah, I think a smart matchup for the UFC to make, and um, I think it'll be the the next contender after Adesanya and, and Costa have their their fight, and uh, yeah, might might be the next guy in line. These two. Yeah, I think it depends on how the fight goes. I know they're still trying to put together Woodley versus uh, Covington. I know that one's still uh, they're still trying to put that one together. So I think whoever's going to come out with the most. Uh, dominant performance out of those two sets of fights is, is going to face the winner of Adesanya Costa for sure. Yep. Good point. Yeah. So uh, let's switch to the whole main event. It's a light heavyweight battle to be, between two legends of the sport. Two, guys two legends been, for sure. Yeah. They've been fighting forever. Uh, back in the pride days, uh, back through Brazil, these guys have faced each other. They've had a couple of wars against each other uh, previously, I think. And, uh, Shogun Hua, Mauricio Shogun Hua, 26, 11, and 1 against Antonio Little Nog, Rogerio Nogueira, 23 and 9. Uh, but you know, you just go into their careers and just think, oh my god, like I can't believe the amount of uh battles that they've had. No, Nogueira's 44 years old, and uh, Shogun's 38. Um, you just go down the murderer's row of guys over the over the years that they've both faced. Uh, it, it's really cool that uh, we're getting to see these guys fight. Yeah, and, and Shogun's had a bit of a resurgence in the last couple of fights. I mean, he lost a bad one to Anthony Smith a few years ago, back in 2018. But then he came up, beat Tyson Pedro uh, in in Australia. So went into Tyson Pedro's uh, hometown there and, and beat beat Tyson uh, Tyson Pedro with with a TKO. And then he went to distance in a draw with Paul Craig, who's also on the card. Another, but another really, you know you know, fierce fighter. So, you know, Shogun's proved that he still got it in him. And uh, yeah, I mean, little Nog has been doing this probably since before you and I were watching fights. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, this, he's got to be close to the end of his career now at uh, age 44. I mean, his brother retired, I think three or four years ago, but yeah, I mean, this, this should be fun. I've got, I've got Shogun uh, t uh, in my mind taking this one, but uh it's the thing as a sport you never know <laughs> yeah true that true yeah i just want to list off some of shogun's uh history uh, he had uh this legendary fight in 2011 against dan henderson uh if you've never seen it guys uh watch that one of the greatest fights to, in ufc history just an absolute five round incredible battle uh i'm so privileged to have had that opportunity to watch that live and and just uh yeah it's just something that you can't miss uh you, you remember you know that battle scott oh my god yeah i mean the damage those guys took um i i don't even stand i don't understand how those guys made it that they made it through that fight i mean uh i think shogun's nose was so badly broken he took so many of dan henderson's uh huge shots but yeah that's that's one of the best fights in history for sure yeah yeah really incredible uh, just, uh, I'm just going to go down some of the fighters that he's, he's fought in his career. He's fought Mark Coleman twice, uh, Kevin Randleman, Forrest Griffin twice, Chuck Liddell, John Jones he fought. Uh, that, that's how John Jones ended up getting the belt in the first place. Uh, Hendo, 
uh, H yeah, Henderson twice, Gustafson, Chael Sonnen, Oban St. Pru, Corey Anderson, Anthony Smith, John Volante. Like, I mean, just, you know, all these guys are, have been heavyweight, uh, light heavyweight staples uh, in, in the UFC, and he's, he's fought them all. Uh, you know, it's pretty hard to find a guy that he hasn't fought in his career. So, you know, yeah, I mean, the experience factor is just impressive there. Yeah, I mean, he lost to Dan Henderson on both occasions, and the first fight is the is is the is the the big one that went to the decision. But it's worth it to watch both fights. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, yeah. he just just I mean, yeah, he gets knocked out in 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 the second one, but just how tough he is and to take those huge shots from Henderson. Because you look at other guys that have Henderson's ended their career practically, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean Shogun. Shogun's all, all, always fun to watch. He always goes for it, and uh, I'm I'm excited. You know, just maybe a bit of uh, you know nostalgia and stuff. Nostalgia oh. going to see. Yeah, this. So, I mean yeah. we're gonna get to see some amazing footage of you know some of the battles that they've fought uh, over the years. Where you know it must be really cool for the editing team being able to try to cut in some footage as they're walking into the cage and they're trying to hype this fight up because you know I can't. It would be hard to narrow it down to you know a minute because you know how many incredible wars have they both been in i know if anyone if anyone wants to have something fun to do just just uh just uh, google uh shogun hua and soccer kick because back in pride you were able to do those soccer kick days and then man was he was he lethal with those so i mean uh yeah i mean Sh shogun's always been always been fun to watch and uh you know he's a warrior right to the end and uh, I'm i'm excited yeah, yeah, uh, and and I'm just gonna go into Rogerio Nogueira's, uh, you know, a little bit of his history. He he was a boxer growing up. Uh, he was a 2006-2007 Brazilian super heavyweight champion, great boxer. Won the bronze medal in boxing 2007 Pan Am Games. Uh, he's beat Alistair Overeem twice. Uh, he fought Phil Bader twice. Phil Davis, I mean uh, Ryan Bader, sorry. Phil Davis, Tito Ortiz, Rashad Evans. He beat beat Tito. Uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson, um, yeah, he's beat. He beat Dan Henderson actually. Uh, he has, um, you know, not looked amazing, amazing in the last little while because I think you know that age is catching up to him. Two wins in the last six, but wow, uh, you know, they had experience being able to go in there. Um, you know, anything that happens, he's seen before for sure uh, in all the wars himself or his camp and his uh, twin brother. So um, yeah, legendary fight. I'm excited. I'm really glad the UFC put this on and. It could be the last fight for poss possibly both of them, but but uh, it's it's going to be fun. I'm really glad two Brazilians going against each other, and they fought before uh, uh, Shogun got the win there. Uh, then you know, talk about another legend, uh, Fabricio Verdum, another Brazilian guy going into this heavyweight fight. To uh, Alex Gusterson, first foray into the heavyweight division, moving up from light heavyweight. Um, how do you see this one going? Uh, I think it's going to be a great battle. Yeah, it should be a, it should be a, a great battle for sure. I mean, for Doom, and you said it might be his last fight. He's forty two now, but uh, Gustafson, I, I'm 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 actually thrilled to see him come back because he's a guy who I felt like he still had so much left in him. I mean, uh, I didn't realize that uh, until recently that he was that he said that the weight cuts were a struggle for him. I mean, he's only thirty three years old right now, so I mean, he's got a he's got a, at least another five years ahead of him and uh i I'm, I'm curious to see what he's going to weigh uh weigh in at because what he's going to fight i think he's probably going to be fighting around 220 229 uh somewhere in that in that because that's where john jones kind of walks around at so it should be pretty cool to see because the mauler has always been a guy who goes for it is a, never had a boring fight i mean just look at some of the fights he's been in some of the wars he's been in mm -hmm. and uh I'm excited because this might be something where it restarts his career. I mean, look at so many guys that had better careers when they've moved up in weight. I mean, Darren Till could be one of those guys, but Whitaker, Whitaker, when he moved from 170 to 185, had a better career. Look at uh, Diamond Dustin Poirier. I mean, all these guys have moved up in, the, in a weight class and it's completely revived their careers. And yeah. I think maybe this might be what, what could happen for Gustafson because he's, he's so talented. He's such a great boxer. He's got all the tools, and he's still only 33 years old. So I'm I'm glad to have him back because I was really disappointed when, uh, you know, he, he and he had that last fight and he retired. And yeah. I think it was a bit salt on the wounds losing in Sweden again yeah. uh, with his last fight. So you know he should be able. You know, no pressure from anybody. No, you know he's he's he has a chance to. 
to come back and I, he, he, this should go his way. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. It should go his way. Yeah. He, uh, it'll, it'll be, um, interesting just, just to see how fast, uh, how much faster he is, um, than Verdum. It'll be interesting to see, like you say, how much weight he's carrying. Um, but yeah, I was really shocked when he decided to retire after losing to Anthony Smith. That was just only, um, June of last year. And, uh, it was a shock, but, um, yeah, you know, these guys take these losses really hard. I think he thought he was a lot better than Anthony Smith. And, um, you know, you look back on Gustafson's career, he just had, you know, phenomenal wars with John Jones. He almost, uh, took the belt from John Jones in their first matchup. And, you know, a, a lot of people were shocked that John Jones got the decision, uh, at the end of that. Um, do you, do you remember that war, uh, how, you know, how close he was to getting the belt? Oh, absolutely. And I think that's another reason why he, he chose to retire because that was his, uh, you know, he, he's fought John Jones twice for the belt. He fought Cormier for the belt once. And generally it's that three strike rule with, with uh, getting a title shot. So, um, yeah, I mean, that John Jones uh, first fight is, is, is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And that's another one. If anyone wants to go back and watch a great fight, that's 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 one of the one of the better ones too. Very true. Yeah, put that near the top of your list. Uh, wow, just an amazing, amazing fight. And uh, that was, I think, that was the first time that Jones had ever faced somebody that uh, had a longer reach than him, and he wasn't able to use that reach to keep guys on the outside. And it just seemed like uh, Jones was like, "Uh oh, I I don't know how to beat this guy. I don't know what to do here." Uh, usually. He, you know, he dominated guys with that reach, but Gustafson, I think, is the same height, but he had a longer reach, so it just befuddled him. And I don't, I don't think he quite had the, had the the longer reach. I think Jones still has the longest reach in the UFC, but it was it was close. It was it was more it was closer than anything that he'd ever dealt with before. Okay, I see. And uh, you know, uh, it's again that's but that just shows you his the his skill set too, and how tough he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gustafson's got big wins over. Uh, Glover Teixeira, Jan Blakovich, Jimmy Manawa, Beach Shogun, we talked about earlier, Thiago Silva. Um, you know, you mentioned some of the losses he had. Uh, he lost to uh, John Jones twice, Cormier, Rumble Johnson, and Phil Davis. But um, yeah, 18 and 6, um, coming out of retirement, hungry again. Uh, I'm glad he's back. Uh, let's go into Verdum a little bit. He's, uh, he's beat just some of the greatest fighters to ever be. Um, Cain Velasquez, he's beat Overeem. He beat Big Nog, uh, uh, Nogueira's brother there. Travis Brown twice. He beat Mark Hunt, Gabriel Gonzaga, Fedor Emelianenko was one uh, massive win um, that they had. Um, and then Bigfoot, Roy Nelson. Uh, he's just uh, fought so many amazing guys over his career. And just, you know, I can't believe, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the battles he's been in and being able to take wins I'm, I'm amazed he's only 23 and 9 it really shocks me I thought he'd been in about 50 wars in, in his <laughs> career and so yeah 23 and 9 but um the other thing that um came out this week was um Verdum said he sparred with Gustafson uh in 2012 about eight years ago he said and uh, he said that he uh went in there and it was one of those battles where a guy's in in the cage and uh guys come in fresh I think uh, maybe two or three guys were coming in for a five round war with him. And he said, so, you know, you know, take it with a little grain of salt, but I, I need him in the face. I gave him uh, five stitches and uh, the camp kicked me out because uh, they were mad that I, I cut him and uh, you know, wasn't, you know, trying to live up to the sparring type of guy I should be. So he said, I, I got, I got the advantage and I know how to beat him. I'm going to take him down. I'm going to beat him up. So it's kind of cool yeah. to hear. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess he's trying to build himself up, but uh, uh, Gustafson's usually a guy who's so calm in there, and uh, you know, uh, that that's probably just more fuel for Gustafson to uh, to to prove his point. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I Gustafson's just such a phenomenal athlete, and I think this just hearing him talk about his struggles with the weight cut and how and how hard they were. I think uh, I'm I'm just totally excited to see him. I think this could be like another situation like uh Dustin Poirier where a guy just it just becomes better yeah yeah and uh you know this actually could influence John Jones as well um you know seeing Gustafson go in there and have success uh yeah maybe maybe Jones makes that decision we've heard some rumors that Jones also has a little bit of difficulty cutting weight he's fought most of the guys already in the weight division uh might 
you know, want to take a second belt. Um, do you, you think uh, Jones is watching this and thinking thinking that? If Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, John Jones has to go up to heavyweight. I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, he's getting older. The weight cuts are going to get harder and harder every day. And the longer he has off, the harder it is for him going to be able to make that cut. So, yeah, yeah I, think, I think heavyweight's probably the – Something we'll, we'll see John Jones in the, in the not too distant future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already calling. He's already tried to call out uh, Stipe. He's already called out Nagano. He's already called out. You know, trying to call out uh, Lesnar uh, when he when that was still something that was an option. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I think right now if he moves up to heavyweight, he's got to you know you know Cormier's there, and I, I just I don't think either of them are interested in continuing that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, few other fights on the card. Uh, any particular ones you want to break down? Uh, I definitely want to talk about this new guy, Kamzat Chimaev. Yeah, uh, that's the guy he, I was mentioning. Yeah, you mentioned him. Um, I'm glad he's getting this quick turnaround. Uh, if he actually wins, I think he sets a UFC record for the the uh, shortest span between two victories. Um, wow, you know he had an amazing, impressive debut, and uh, they're putting him. In against a guy that's making his debut in Reese McKee, who had, was a Cage Warriors champion. Um, yeah, what about this Kamzat Chimaev? Well, in his previous fight too, he he fought at uh, middleweight, and now he's and he actually said that that wasn't his division. He said that uh, he was he took that fight last minute and he went up against a, a, a striker, so he he was smart. I mean, but if you, if you watch that fight again, I mean, he leads with the with a high body kick and right straight into a double leg, and. His opponent fought uh, through one punch the entire fight. It went into the second round, and the guy just had him down in those Dagestani handcuffs and just just was just ground him down and and literally, I mean, the guy for for a kid that's only got nine fights, he looked like a like a veteran, like like a like a complete pro. He was using like the the part of the knuckles that isn't covered by the glove to to cut his opponent up and. Uh, you know, I'm excited. And now he's going to fight at, uh, at welterweight. Mm-hmm. So he's got to have made the cut in, in, in just a couple of weeks. And he actually went to Dana White and said, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving Abu Dhabi. Just keep giving me opponents and, uh, I'll stay here and keep fighting. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad the UFC did that. I'm glad the UFC said, well, for sure. Let's, let's see what this kid's got. Cause again, he, he didn't even take a punch. His opponent threw one punch. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. It, it, was, it was. It was. It was a. It was a. A, a beautiful, beautiful debut. Yeah. Um. I just want to bring up the the guy. Um. Who did he fight in that first? I'm trying to. I'm trying to go back to. Oh, he fought John Phillips, who's a who's a who's a heavy, heavy knockout artist, a great striker, and uh, you know, Chimeyev was was smart enough to know that, you know, take him to the ground and and pound him out. But he was active the entire time, no resting, nothing. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to see. I mean, that in that first kick he threw was 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 beautiful too, and he was so fast. Like, shooting a double leg off a off a kick like that was a lot of, showed a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. W- one of the things I I thought about doing um, recently was trying to compile a list of these debut fights uh, since the pandemic's uh, quarantine was you know um, released, and we we finally got some fights here. I'd really like to make a list of of the guys and sort of rank them, uh, you know, top debuts because, uh, man, I, I, you know, I don't remember having such in such a short period of time, so many impressive debuts and so many guys that I, I hadn't really heard of before. Hadn't, uh, you know, focused too much on, on their earlier careers. They were coming from regional circuits all over the place and, and a lot of, you know, other trainers or friends of friends or people were bending Dana's ear and saying, Hey, give this, this guy a chance. And, and I'm glad the UFC's doing that, uh, and to, you know, reward a guy for doing so well, not taking any damage, saying he'd stay in Abu Dhabi until these Fight Island uh, fights were gone. Um, you know, that's great on the UFC. I'm really, really happy that they, you know, said, yeah, sure, let's turn it around and, and fight a guy on his debut too. Well, what I think you're going to start to see is kind of like uh, two sort of hub cities. You're going to have the Yaz Island and then obviously Las Vegas. So a lot of these guys that made their debut in Vegas or in, uh, in Florida – are going to be kind of the guys that are always going to be ready to go in, the, in these cards up, up and coming in, in Vegas. So I think we're going to see a lot of those guys again, like Justin James and, and guys like that. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm excited to see these guys again because I want to see how they, 
they use this momentum. And then Dana's talking about if they have to shut down the States because it's getting bad down there, they'll, they'll move everything, even thinking about moving the contender series to Abu Dhabi. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be cool to see. I think you're going to see a lot of these familiar faces and as guys are looking for opponents or needing opponents. And uh, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be like a, like almost like a, like a boot camp for these guys because the, the and they're, you're going to see some guys come out of this as, as top top contending guys i i'm yeah. i'm sure of it i'm not saying it's going to be jamea but um he's going to fight a lot in the, in the next six six months to a year as, as long as long as this this situation is going yeah well the oc has always been fantastic for that uh with the ultimate fighter you know um being able to really change change the sport and you know force griffin beating stefan bonner and you know just being able to get so many eyeballs on the sport finally and, uh, you know, look at all the guys that have won the Ultimate Fighter over the years. They became, a lot of them became champions. A lot of them became, you know, really top contenders. Uh, once the Ultimate Fighter has, has kind of, you know, start, started losing some popularity, this Dana White Contender Series came in. And, you know, I, I'd like to know the numbers, but I can't believe how many guys have um, been able to go through that and, and girls go through that series and, and start making their debuts. And uh, UFC is really smart. They're, you know, look at Dan these, Ige. Yeah, yeah, like really smart, smart sport using these, you know, series and and fights to you know show the contenders and and uh, you know a lot of times you and I have talked about people cleaning out their division. There's nobody left, and and that's just the people that we've seen. There's guys waiting in the wings around the world, just waiting for their opportunity, and they you know come in and you know they probably only need two or three fights to you know be, rise up that ranks and and maybe have a shot. So. It's it's cool that you don't have to think. Oh man, nobody's ever going to beat Amanda Nunes. Nobody's ever going to beat John Jones. Nobody's ever going to beat some of these longtime champions. Well, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think there's uh, you know thousands of guys that are waiting for their chance, and all they have to do is just have a few amazing you know knockouts, and they might have a shot. Absolutely. I mean, they started with the Ultimate Fighter, then they moved on to uh, uh, Dana White looking for a fight. Remember that. That, that another show where they sort of travel the country and then to the contender series. I think the contender series is going to be something that's going to be hard to pull off. That's, that's a five week stint. I, I believe if, if you know, don't quote me on those numbers. So, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to just see more cards like this and guys just coming in and being a part, you know, the undercard of these, uh, of these uh, main events are going to be, um, you know, almost like a mini contender series. Cause a lot of these guys have stepped up were guys who were earmarked to be on the contender series and they just got fast tracked right in. Yeah. So it would not surprise me if, if, if that happens. I mean, I don't know how many new contracts they're willing to hand out because it's standard UFC contract. It usually uh, promises three fights a year. I don't know if they're augmenting that right now, but uh, Dana White said uh, in the next couple of weeks, he should have uh almost till November or the rest of the year even uh, figured out. So wow. they're on it and, and I, I'm excited. I mean, they're, they're really the sport that's leading the, leading the charge. And I think they're doing it right. I think these, these are going to be the two hub cities. I don't think you're going to see a fight anywhere other than Vegas or Abu Dhabi for a long time. I think Abu Dhabi is going to be uh, even a bigger uh, stage than, than it is now. I think everyone was expecting apex to be, the place but uh seeing what's going on in the states i think uh you're gonna see a lot of guys in a lot of international fighters a lot of guys from Dagestan and from the middle east and georgia georgian fighters and stuff like that uh coming out yeah and yeah and brazil's always producing an amazing amount of great fighters. brazil's having a tough time though brazil's yeah. having a tough time with with covid right now it's sure is, uh yeah. it's one of the worst uh, out there the so world. um you know i, I don't know it's 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 really it's really really freaking scary when you when you look at the numbers and uh dana white talked about it in the post fight um because a lot of guys were asking whether or not they think vegas will be shut down and he's not ruling anything out so fortunately they've got this uh yaz island and they can start moving guys there right away they can just get them get them there they can start being quarantined they can be within that 10 10 mile radius of a safe zone and uh the testing's available yeah. and uh, you know, the training centers are available. So I, I think Abu Dhabi is going to uh, 
it's going to start to be the, the new home of the UFC. That's just my my opinion. That's just my prediction. Yeah. I haven't no, no, nothing's been officially stated to say that, but the states is just it's a wildfire down there. Yeah, no kidding. It's it's terrible, and yeah, I, I know you know nobody nobody really knows what's what's going to happen, but um, yeah, good chance that. You know, it went off so well, these uh, first three cards there in Abu Dhabi, that um, good chance they, they want to move, move most of them there and uh, just, just fight out of this bubble. And it's, it's, yeah, it's been highly successful. And I know Abu Dhabi is sort of bent over backwards to uh, make, the, make it happen. And, you know, they, they're doing a really, really fantastic job. So, uh, and uh, they look like they're having fun, actually. I, I heard fighters said, oh, we're, we're enjoying ourselves. Uh, the hotels are really nice. The uh, Food's been great. Uh, did you see Bisping and the, the skydiving uh, a little, <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> circle there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he said he was you know they were laughing and you know he said wow what a time I had and uh, you know it sounds like they're you know they're not just in a bubble quarantine sitting there in the hotel room. There's actually activities. There's actually a lot of things to do for them outside of of the fighting. So yeah, it's, it's going well so far. Yeah, and I think if it's a place that has the residency to house fighters, guys are just going to stay there and wait for the fights to come back. I think we're going to start to see that, uh, you know, more so uh, in the future. I mean, Vegas is something that that could happen with also, but it, again, just with the uh, with the numbers that are happening in, in in Vegas, guys should be trying to get into that to get to that ten mile uh, safe zone pretty quick. I mean, and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's something that uh, it's it's a way for the for the UFC to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, any other fights you want to talk about? Uh, Paul Craig's fighting light heavyweight on that against a Russian um, guy. Paul Craig's always really uh, fun. Always to watch. exciting. Uh, yeah, always super exciting. Uh, he had he's uh, a, a, a Paul, draw Paul against Craig's, Shogun last time, but um, yeah, yeah, he's he's great. Yeah, Paul Craig's a guy who, uh, I mean, other than the Shogun, which was a, uh, which was a, a draw, uh, he's a guy who goes to knock you out or, or choke you out or gets knocked out or choked out. I mean, so he's a guy who's always going for it. Um, and he's, again, a, 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 always fun to watch. And uh, I'm excited to see, see him. Um, yeah. Um, then they got uh, Cowboy Oliveira against uh, Peter Sabota. Um Sabota was uh, born in Poland, but raised in Germany. His last fight was a loss to Leon Edwards, but um, he, yeah. he beat uh, Ben Saunders and Nicholas Dalby before that. Um, Cowboy, a lot of fun. Um, he's, you know, he's 28-1, uh, and one, but, um, yeah, he's won his last fight over Max Griffin. Um, yeah, that should be a pretty nice battle in the welterweight division. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Cowboy fights a lot, so he's, uh, he's always fun to watch. Sabota is a guy who... Um, who hasn't had he, his, he has he doesn't fight that much so he's only fought I think like a handful of times in the last few years so uh, that'll be interesting to see how 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 that affects him um, but uh, yeah again it should be fun to watch and I'm excited to see um, also in the card Carla Esparza she's had a bit of a uh, rekindling in her career the last few fights she's looked really really good against Mariana Rodriguez so that should be another another good fight to watch and uh, you know again I'm uh, Excited about all these guys I haven't seen uh, fight out there. Like, I know Francisco Trinaldo's fighting a guy's game, Jay Haybear, who I don't know who that is. I haven't seen him fight. And, uh, again, I'm excited because it, it can go either way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, the only other fight that I definitely 100% wanted to mention was the heavyweight clash between Tanner Bozer and Rafael Pessoa. Uh, Bozer had an amazing, impressive performance last time. And, uh, Nice to see the Canadian getting a, a, a shot so quick uh, after that big knockout win. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts about Tanner? I, I've, I've heard him uh, lately on the radio, and he's starting to get a lot of exposure. and Pretty great. Uh, that debut was amazing. Yeah, he looked really good that knockout against Linz. I mean, he's a, uh, he's a big guy, too. He almost, uh, you know, looks like he could be fighting at, a, at the division higher. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see him again. Uh, again, I don't like to... Uh, to uh or sorry he looked like a guy who's like the speed and everything of a guy like a light heavyweight is what i meant to say but uh he's a guy that um i don't know i, I i'm excited to see uh you know i again i don't want to get too excited because it's w one fight right yeah yeah and uh it's it's gonna be fun to see these guys going forward yeah so 
Yeah, that's great. Uh, lots of fights coming up this weekend. Um, UFC Fight Island has been a huge success, and uh, we've seen lots of uh, new champions crowned and uh, new guys uh, finally making their UFC debuts and, and uh, possibly becoming champions into the future. Um, super impressed uh, the way the UFC has pulled this off, and we're you know excited to meet on a weekly basis like this and be able to break down the, the fight from the weekend before and talk about the one upcoming. Uh, yeah, this it's gives me a lot of really good things to do and keep on top of. And uh, always great to have good, good guys like Scott Holborn join us. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Have, have, uh, has anything changed in your life uh, in this past week? Uh, just uh, anything no. changed? Anything uh, new? Or is it just the same no, old thing just, we've seen in the last little while? Same old, same old. But, uh, you know, just a lot, there was a lot of fights to watch in a short period of time, which, which was a lot of fun, you know, when, when, you, when you get uh, – three cards in a week there so it's 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 fun and i'm looking forward to uh to saturday i'm, yeah. I'm wishing there was another another card on wednesday but uh yeah uh I'm looking forward to saturday night yeah i originally thought they were doing this um wednesday saturday wednesday saturday yeah, i thought it was spread out like that but uh yeah they, they had that midweek card this past week and um yeah here we go uh, we had a few days to wait so um yeah, I can, you know, get into other things in my life, but uh, I, I'm really excited for Saturday. I'm sure you and I will be texting each other quite a bit and uh, look forward to the fights. Can't wait to see you next Monday. Thanks so much again. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Thanks for having me. Okay. All the best. Take, Take care. care. Have a great week. You too. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Another, uh, another hour just flew by. Holy cow. Um, yeah. Talking about UFC is uh, one of my favorite things to do, and I'm really glad. Scott joins uh, me on a, a regular basis on Mondays, and uh, we get an opportunity to talk about the great events that have happened and the ones that are upcoming. Uh, hope you enjoyed it yourself. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in again. Complete Sports Media would be nothing without you guys, and I'm really glad that I'm starting to get some really great support, and thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your comments and your likes and your suggestions, and Everything's been great. Uh, I'm having fun. I hope you are as well. We're going to be getting um, lots and lots of great guests coming up. We've got our resident analysts who, you know, make the show work. But i uh, got some exciting news coming up for you this week. i uh, got some official word that uh, I've got a fantastic guest joining me on Wednesday. So keep tuning in. And, uh, yeah, give a shout-out to um, – some of my best fans out there. MMA reviewer, thanks so much for all your support. I really appreciate your postings and all your great comments and words. Uh, it's been really nice to have such a great, loyal, dedicated fan. And and uh, a lot of you others, uh, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate all the likes and all the, all the support. So take care of yourself. Um, enjoy your week. And uh, keep tuning in to Complete Sports Media. Love you lots. Bye for now.